Life at sea is uniquely challenging. Sailing crews encounter a variety of extremely difficult conditions, including steering, shifting cargo, running aground, capsizing, and fires. Accidents do happen and they can lead to disaster, or they can be miraculous events of survival. Let's take a look at some of the worst ship failures in modern history. On the morning of October 31, 2018, the cruise ferry called the GNV Excellent was docking in its home port of Barcelona when it crashed into a gantry crane. The ferry's hull suffered severe damage, but luckily no injuries were reported among the 60 passengers on board. But then a crane came crashing down and hit a fuel tank on the ground, which ignited. The fire burned for almost three hours before it was successfully extinguished by firefighters. The accident was technically called an elision, which by definition is when a ship hits a fixed object and was not a collision with another vessel. This happened because of poor navigation through harsh weather in the Barcelona harbor, and the ship was pushed off course by high winds. While no one was hurt, two passengers were reportedly treated by medics for panic attacks. In Venice, another popular tourist area in southern Europe, some passengers were not quite as lucky. On June 3, 2019, a 66,000-ton out-of-control cruise ship rammed into a dock and a riverboat, injuring five of the riverboat passengers in a terrifying and dramatic scene. The MSC Opera cruise ship, with its horn blaring, was bracing for collision as one of its engines had malfunctioned and was stuck on full thrust. As it careened toward the dock and the riverboat, two tugboats that were linked to the ship by cables tried to pull the boat and stop the collision. But one of the cables snapped, sending the giant ship out of control. The bow of the opera smashed into the dock and then hit the smaller riverboat, which was crushed under the much larger ship like a tin can. People on the dock were seen running for their lives, and it looked as though the ship might just come aground. Despite being unsuccessful in stopping the cruise ship, the tugboats in Venice were safe, which is more than you can say for two ship guides in the Panama Canal. Mules, also known as tow trains, are locomotives that help steer large ships through the Panama Canal so they don't hit the sides of the canal and cause damage to the passing ships. But back in 2015, there was an accident in which a tow train was almost completely crushed when a larger container ship was being guided into one of the water locks. Luckily, no one was injured and the container ship was completely unaffected. However, container ships are not always so lucky, and their cargo can also be dangerous. A disastrous ship container accident in New Zealand resulted in the country's worst maritime environmental disaster to date. In October of 2011, the MV Rena ran aground the Astrolabe Reef when it was carrying almost 1,500 containers, most of which had fuel oil. The ship's accident was a result of the crew handing over the controls while no one was monitoring the position of the ship. The ship remained aground on the reef for months, and a crack in the hole caused the ship to break in two. About 200 tons of fuel spilled into the sea, and the oil slick threatened wildlife and adversely affected the area's fishing industry. The Transport Accident Investigation Commission concluded that the MS Arena's running aground was completely due to human error, poor navigation, and not following standard operating procedures when taking over control of the ship. In an incident that was directly a result of mechanical failure, not human error, a Norwegian luxury cruise ship suffered a severe loss of oil pressure, causing the vessel to become stranded. On March 23, 2019, the Viking Sky had 1,300 people on board when all four of its engines failed. The ship started to drift towards land, but because of severe weather, tugboats were not able to guide the ship, anchors were not effective, and rescue boats had to return to shore. The crew managed to restart one of the engines and just barely avoided disaster as it was about 300 feet from running aground. But the one engine wasn't enough to guide the ship safely to shore. Six Norwegian helicopters were dispatched to begin evacuating passengers. As the ship began to lurch from side to side, passengers were taking videos of onboard furniture sliding across the ship's decks. 479 people had been airlifted off the ship during the 30 helicopter trips, but many were still left on board as the vessel was towed back to port after the storm had subsided the next day. In another case of human error, a much more serious accident happened off the coast of Singapore and Malaysia when a U.S. Navy ship, the USS John S. McCain, collided with a Liberian-flagged tanker, the Alnik MC. The Alnik MC was a 30,000-ton chemical and oil tanker which hit the U.S. ship and caused significant damage to its hull. Crew berths, compartments, machinery, and communication rooms were flooded, and 10 U.S. Navy sailors died. 
The U.S. Navy reported that the ship lost steering control shortly before the accident, but they were unclear why the crew didn't use the ship's backup steering system. They blamed the fatigued bridge crew, poor communication, and crowded shipping lanes as the most likely reason for the accident. Another deadly U.S. Navy accident claimed the lives of seven U.S. Navy sailors. On June 17, 2017, the destroyer USS Fitzgerald collided with the MV ACX Crystal, a Philippine-flagged container ship about 80 nautical miles southwest of Tokyo. Both ships are well-equipped with sophisticated navigational equipment that should have been capable of avoiding the crash, even in the very busy shipping and fishing area near Tokyo. The ships were three miles apart, which is a comfortable distance. But very quickly, within the span of five minutes, disaster struck. After the accident, two top senior officers and the top enlisted sailor were all relieved of their duties and faced criminal charges. The owners of the Filipino merchant vessel had agreed to compensate the U.S. Navy to the tune of $27 million for the accident. 100 years earlier, in 1915, a passenger ship based in Chicago, the SS Eastland, rolled over onto its side when tied to a dock in the Chicago River. On that fateful day, the Western Electric Company had chartered the boat to ferry its workers to a company picnic event, the only chance for workers to have a holiday. When the ship was fully loaded with its capacity of 2,500 passengers, many of them gathered on the top decks. The Eastland started to capsize because she was top-heavy and had poor ballast design. The ship began to lurch with all the weight at the top and tipped away from the wharf. Within minutes, and to the terror of the passengers, the ship was at a 45-degree angle and water was pouring into the engine room. And in under two minutes, the SS Eastland was completely on her side. Hundreds of passengers were trapped on lower decks and tried desperately to flee their cabins. Many were unsuccessful, and stunned people at the riverfront watched in horror as disaster unfolded before them. In a ship accident that had less disastrous results, the MTS Oceanos was found leaning badly to its side from flooding in 1991. Fortunately, this time, all 571 passengers and crew on board were saved. While speeding to make up time for an earlier delay from its departure from East London, South Africa, the Oceanos encountered rough seas. The theory is that earlier repairs to the ship's waste disposal pipe were not completed, which allowed the rough waves slamming against the ship to cause flooding. Realizing the fate of the ship, the crew fled in panic, neglecting their duties in closing portholes and sounding an alarm. Passengers remained ignorant of what was taking place until some of them noticed the flooding in the lower decks. When passengers and the ship's musicians went to the bridge to get assistance, they found it unmanned. One of them managed to broadcast a mayday distress call, which was quickly answered. The captain and crew were convicted of negligence for fleeing without helping passengers. The captain of the Costa Concordia ship also abandoned his ship before evacuation was complete in January of 2012. The ship ran aground after deviating from its course and overturned when it hit a big rock under the water off the coast of Italy. Everyone on board realized something was wrong when the ship suddenly decreased speed and power was lost. The Costa Concordia was carrying over 4,200 people, not counting stowaways, which is more than twice the total of the Titanic. Most passengers were evacuated in about two hours by lifeboats, and some even swam ashore. However, there were some passengers that did not survive. It was later discovered that the captain had ordered the ship to sail unusually close to the coast of Italy as a salute to his home country. The Cunard Ocean Liner, the RMS Lusitania, happened on May 7, 1915, during World War I, before tactics for avoiding submarines were developed. The ship went down off the coast of Ireland and sank in 18 minutes, leaving only 761 survivors out of 1,200 passengers. The ship became an iconic symbol in military recruiting campaigns for why the war was being fought. Just two years later, in 1917, 2,000 people were lost at sea, and as many as 9,000 were injured when the French cargo ship SS Mont Blanc collided with the Norwegian ship the SS IMO. The Mont Blanc was carrying high explosives and was on the way from New York City by Halifax, Nova Scotia, to Bordeaux, France. The collision happened at the low speed of one knot which is equivalent to about one mile an hour in a narrow strait outside of Halifax. But the impact was significant enough to damage the barrels that contained the explosive ammunition. Sparks from the collision ignited the leaking explosives, and 20 minutes after a fire ignited, the Mont Blanc exploded in a giant mushroom cloud. Everything within a half-mile radius of the explosion was obliterated, 
including spectators who were watching the blazing ship. The blast caused a tsunami which wiped out most areas of Dartmouth and some parts of Halifax, including an entire community of Native Americans who had lived there for generations. The next day, the harsh Canada weather dumped a deep layer of snow on top of the devastation, which hampered rescue efforts and continued to increase the number of fatalities. Another terrible disaster in which lives were lost was when the MV Doña Paz struck an oil tanker in 1987. The Filipino passenger ferry was dangerously overcrowded with at least half the total passengers not listed on the manifest. The Doña Paz collided with the MT Vector, an oil tanker that was operating without a license and was found to be unseaworthy, even though it was carrying 8,800 barrels of gasoline and other petroleum products. Reportedly, the Philippine maritime authorities did not learn of the accident for eight hours, and it took another eight hours to organize a search and rescue mission. There were well over 4,000 passengers and only 26 survivors.